Line with us is Pat Mitchell, a journalist, media executive, producer, curator of TED Women, chair of the Sundance and Women's Media Center boards, trustee of the V-Day movement, and author of an amazing new book, Becoming a Dangerous Woman. Her website is patmitchellmedia.com, and you can tweet her at Pat Mitchell. Pat, welcome to the program. Thank you, John. Thanks Great so, to be with you. Thanks so much for being with us. I, I, I found your book fascinating, particularly the the uh, introduction where you were telling the story of uh, essentially introducing yourself to this group of women. You want to share that with us? Declaring myself a dangerous woman Correct. that day? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well it, well, it still feels a bit dangerous, Tom, actually. Um, but it came about because I was trying to find a way to identify myself in a circle of activists and leaders. I didn't have a title anymore, and I wanted something that would describe why I was there ready to do the work to make the world safer and better for women and girls. So I just heard myself quite unexpectedly stand up in response to something someone had said earlier, which is, we are living in dangerous times. That just connected with me in a very powerful way. And I stood up and said, well, I'm Pat Mitchell, and I'm a dangerous woman. And then went That's on to, to say, because I think search times call on us to become more dangerous. How, how are these times, I mean, the, it, Donald Trump is the obvious thing, but it, it's, it's obviously, it's also, uh, I think, apparent to many people this is larger than Trump, or at least I hope so. Um, what do you see as the great dangers of our time that uh, dangerous men and women, or in particular dangerous women, need to be stepping up to and speaking to? Well, one of the most prevalent dangers and one that is on the rise and not decreasing is the amount of violence against women and girls. I work in many places around the world where danger is an ever-present uh, consequence of just being born in that country. But in every country where I work and deal and, and know communities of women, there are very real dangers, and many of them having to do with the inability to feel safe, safe in our homes, safe in our workplaces, safe in our communities. So clearly ending violence is an absolute essential before we can do anything, step into our power, own our positions, pursue our opportunities. We have to free women of the fear of violence. And that violence... And then you look at... I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Um, no, I was just going to say, and when you add to that the rise in racism as well as sexism and the lack of any kind of guarantees of equal justice or even equality in its most basic forms, um, you have many, many more reasons to recognize the dangers are on the rise, and so are the opportunities, in my opinion, for us to step up against them, speak up against the status quo, and start to shape new policies. What, what would you say to to women who are living in the upper middle class suburbs and voting for Donald Trump. Um, I mean, he took 53% of white women. This would be mostly white women. Um, and he's still polling in some places in many states, well above 50% among women in those states, and particularly in the southern states. Um, what would you say to them in a one-on-one -on -one situation? After I've asked why? Yes. <laughs> uh, which, which is a question that I'm asking as I'm uh, going around the country, meeting with many of these communities. Um, in many ways, these, this vote, as well as our often voting against our own self-interest, um, there's a construct that encourages us to compete with each other, to compare with each other, which has created a lack of trust among women of communities. So what I say to them is look around at where we have gotten with the current power paradigm and recognize that there are real fears about how this is going for our children and our grandchildren. And we have the ability to change that. 
but we can't do it alone. And we've been encouraged to work alone and in our silos and to protect our own turf rather than using our turf to elevate other women. So I have some wonderful examples that I've known and witnessed that I am able to share with these women, which, you know, many times a light will go off when they will say, well, yes, if I had had that kind of mentorship or sponsorship or advocacy at an earlier age, or if I let go of the fear that if I do well, someone else will do not do as well. I mean, that whole win-lose dynamic and the scarcity syndrome, too, which has played into a lot of the politics around uh, women. We're talking to Pat Mitchell. Her new book is called, titled Becoming a Dangerous Woman, her website, patmitchellmedia.com, and you can tweet her at Pat Mitchell. Pat, one of the more interesting um, memes is made, perhaps not the right word, but our slogans or cliches or whatever that's, that's floating around just in the last uh, six months or so. Um, is basically a put down of of the boomer generation. Um, you know, I'm I'm a member of. I'm I'm well past social security age. Um, and by young people, by simply saying, "Okay, boomer," you know, as in like you're dismissed. And and the media seems to be playing this up a lot. I've seen several articles about it in just in the last few days in the New York Times, in the Financial Times, and other places. And yet, it seems to me, I mean, you know, doing this radio show for these years that many of the calls that I'm getting, many of the most active people who participate in this show are either people who are, you know, over at least 55 or so, or uh, in other words, close in, in within my generational cohort, um, I'm 68, or they are people in their 20s. And, and there's like this kind of hole between maybe 30 and, and 55 where people, I think, are just so busy with their families and trying to make a living and this, the daily struggle that they're not so much engaged in politics. But this, this uh, connection, I, I'm actually seeing a connection between boomers and millennials rather than conflict. And maybe I'm just missing something that's going on here, um, but I'm curious. No, Tom. Your thoughts on that? I think you're on it. I, I, I think you have absolutely identified the potential for the greatest positive and transformative changes that we have in front of us. Is that this millennial generation who has clearly stepped up and who has said, we're not waiting for the rest of you to come and solve our problems. We, we're going to take to the streets and we're going to demand action. And then you've got older population and in particular older women who have the potential for being the most dangerous population on earth and let me tell you why i that i believe this but also others have have stated it as well we we are potentially the largest population on earth the fastest growing population on earth women over 50. we are living longer healthier we have more resources than any generation before us, by and large. We certainly are better connected. So we have the opportunity to build a global community of activists who now have more time to focus on their community work, their country's needs, uh, having gotten past the uh, responsibilities on a day-to-day -day basis often of family and, and sometimes full-time work. So certainly at, it took me all the way to age 75 to stand up and declare myself a dangerous woman. But certainly I've been involved and engaged in taking risks before that. But I am, in fact, ready to take more risk, ready to take on more challenges than ever before in my life. And, of course, add to that that I am much, much more impatient about everything, especially <laughs> yes. the rollback on rights and freedoms that we're experiencing. Yes, uh, I, I, I share your perspective and your impatience. Pat Mitchell, you've written a brilliant book, Becoming a Dangerous Woman, patmitchellmedia.com. You can find it in your local bookstore. Uh, you can tweet her at Pat Mitchell. Pat, thanks so much for dropping by today.